think? Well, he's a movie star. Movie star. Huh? Breakfast, gentlemen. Everybody out for a little morning exercise here. Nothing too strenuous. Just enough to brush the cobwebs out of the brain. Get every little red corpuscle out on the road of life in its running shoes. At the count of three, gentlemen. Are you ready? One, two, three. That's enough. Don't overdo it. This clown grins at everything like he's on a free house seat. Uh, oh, excuse me, Mr. Cully. There's some telegrams for you. Yeah, if there's anything I hate, it's a message in a yellow envelope. You know? A yellow-bellied letter. How did you lick cowardice in the line, Baron? During the First World War, they shot every tenth man. Well, if that's good enough for you, Baron, that's good enough for us. Execute every tenth yellow belly, Baron. Mm. Rest of the firing squad coming up. Right, dying, dying, Dutch. Stations, iron, Gordon, there, three, look at that. Hey, kid. Aston, count off each tenth yellow belly, Corporal. Yes, sir. One, two. Please trust me, yes, I'll change the dimension, yellow belly. Open the defense, it's the man. You bet, Baron, right in the bonds. Now, sir, you fresh milk to hurt. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What kind of butchers are you? Don't you give the poor slob a chance to say a few last words? Smoke a cigarette? Fast draw. Sir, doctor, get the fast draw timer. Right. From the belt? Or from your mother's bank account, if you like, huh? Nothing. Because uh, you owe me three hundred dollars for this right now, and you can't afford that, you know what? Here we are in the streets of Laredo, right after sun, with Sheriff Cuckoo Collie and gorgeous Jerry Grant, a showdown to the finish. Gentlemen, the street is yours. Ready? Draw. You hung up like an old lady. He didn't cock it. Didn't cock it. Didn't oil my gun. You did it. How fast you did it? I don't know. Mr. Collie, this is the one ninety-fifth of the day. Can't let this Shoot a tin cans in Vegas. That little horseplay with the gun can cost you your cabaret license and about two million dollars a year. Jail is the least of it. We need more than that, Mrs. Uh, uh, Haley. Uh, you said you heard some shots. It could have been a backfire or something. On the 21st floor? Look, it wasn't no backfire. I could hear things through the door. And I could hear talking, too, talking about how someone got shot. And in Penthouse Suite A, Don Colley's room. Look, I want my five dollars. Officer in this hotel for eight years. Before that, I was a cop for 30 years. Anybody shot up a gun in this hotel, I'd know it. Well, it happened here in the penthouse. Maybe you were in the basement. <laughs> what do you think this hotel is? A one man operation? I've got 15 men on security duty round the clock. Now, people shot off guns in this hotel, I know about it. Well, see anything? Broken mirrors and bullet holes. The shot came from the bedroom. in this world, Mr. Alexander? Sure. Some can even afford a penthouse suite. <laughs> All right, I know Mr. Carley's reputation, and I always thought a plaster saint, but well, he pays 150 bucks a day for this suite, and he's entitled to make some noise. Including the firing of a gun, which is against the law in New York City. Well, I don't know what he does in other hotels, but he's never brought a gun into this one, and he's never fired it. You know something? I think you guys get soft when you take these hotel security jobs. You, um... Overlook things. Like what, Alexander? Like this. Unless you think that's a moth hole. Well, it could be anything. Now, just a minute, young fellow. You're defacing hotel property. I'm just digging out the slug. I said you're defacing hotel property. 
It's a bullet hole. And in the hole, there's a slug. Well, we have to go now. Besides, I'm not sure I even see a hole. There's a hole, all right. Oh, it may not be there an hour from now, but right now there's a hole, and in the hole is a slug. And probably if I look hard enough and long enough, I'll find blood stains on the rug. Well, you're through looking, young fellow. Let's go. Nothing personal. Just doing my job. Yeah. I guess the question is, uh, who's paying you to do this job? Or should I say, uh, who's paying you off? Don't pull anything, Pepper. You know you're not gonna pull that jazz. Don't you get it? That's part of the instructions. A nice, quiet cover-up. Discreet. No fuss. This is a first-class hotel. We cater to the finest people. Well, um, pal, you better take care of your moth holes. I didn't phone in no news tip. You think I got time for junk like that? You want me to scream for the cops? Oh, I don't think you'll do that, Mrs. Ely. The people who told you to shut up wouldn't like that. You know something? You give me a headache. I gotta take a pill. Don't you think I recognize your voice? You called me today. You gave me your name and your address. Miss Healy, I've uh, got some money for you. And maybe more than just the five dollars the bulletin gives the news tips. Huh? How, uh, how much you gonna pay me? Well, it depends on how much you tell me. Yeah. He was one of the waiters, uh, Sid Berlitz. I don't know how he got shot, but he did. They took him out of the hotel and took him someplace. I don't know where. Now, uh, did an ambulance come for the man? Well, uh, one of the busboys told me that they put him into a, a limousine, you know, one of those yeah. big jobs with the chauffeur. Yeah, yeah. Was he, was he carried out or did he walk? Well, he was uh, kind of helped out, but, uh, but he bled. And me and another cleaning woman had to, to vacuum up the new rug. Did you see the old rug? No, the maintenance boys took it out before we could see it. Anything else? Look, mister, you've been here long enough. Now how much do I get? Well, say what, fifty dollars. You're kidding. What do you expect? Well, a couple of hundred at least. A Co <laughs> couple of hundred? Oh, you got it all wrong, Mrs. Healy. The big money's on the other side. Five, ten, fifteen. My name is Alexander. I'm a reporter from the Bulletin. Yes, what is it? I'd like to speak to your husband. But he can't. Oh, he's not home? Oh, he's home all right, but he's asleep. Oh, he's all right, then. Well, of course he's all right. Why wouldn't he be all right? Well, you know why, Mrs. Burlix. Because he was shot today. Who are you? I told you, I'm a reporter. I'm, I'm running down a story. May I come in? No, you can't. Look, you've got the wrong place. What are you afraid of, Mrs. Berlitz? Your husband's right inside, isn't he? It's uh, not that you're alone here, is it? Look, I'm for real. Here's my press card. Come in. Your husband, a uh, waiter and uh, interior decorator. And... Well, he's only been a waiter two months. He's had a, a little hard luck trying to find the right kind yeah. of work. Say, listen, why, why don't we not? Maybe he, uh, maybe he's awake. No. He's not in there, is he? Collie's hiding him out someplace, huh? It's nothing but a big, dirty cover-up. I think you're very insulting. Please leave. Look, Mrs. Burlitz. I've been lied to. I've been shuffled all around the place. I've been evaded. I've been, I've been told to get lost. But I got a couple of facts going for me, and I won't let them go. And one of them is that your husband, Sidney Burlitz, was shot this morning at the Hammond Hotel by a person or persons unknown and in the company of Mr. Don Colley. Now he had to be helped out of the hotel. 
Also, he bled enough to stain the rug so badly it had to be replaced. Oh, they didn't, uh, they didn't fill you in on that little detail, did they? Stop saying things like that. Get out. Get out. I'm going to call the police. All right. All right, Mr. Berlitz. But I'm going to stay with this. Because there are laws that say nobody, nobody, not even a Don Collie, can go out and shoot somebody and then, and then cover it up with money or, or glamour or whatever it is. Now, you can go and quote me after I go when you make your phone call. What phone call? You know what phone call. The call to the boys, you know, let them know somebody's been here. All right, Hennessy, I'm going to give you the Army Archer. Hold on. Army, will you pick up Hennessy on 4 at the 34th Street holdup? Right, Mark. Hi, Hennessy. I'm on. Ollie, make sure the man who's doing the captions on the fire story gets this, please. You want to see me, Mark? Oh, only now and then, Nick. The town is bursting at the seams. Am I correct in assuming that this is a working day for you? Well, you know what I was doing. I was checking out that collie story. So I have heard from several different sources. By the way, who are you? Philo Vance or Nero Wolf? Nero Wolf never left the house. Aha, uh -huh. well, that's uh -huh. the one that you should emulate, my dear boy. First of all, I've had a complaint from the management of the Hammond Hotel to the effect that you were defacing hotel property. I was digging out a bullet hole trying to find a slug. Ah, then there was a lawyer here this morning on behalf of one Mrs. Maggie Healy. They are threatening to sue us because you paid her $50, allegedly, to lie about certain events occurring in said Hammond Hotel. I didn't pay her to lie. Last night she told the truth, and they got to her, paid a little bit more, and so she changed the story. Then the police called this morning, and they wanted to know where you were. It seems they have a complaint from one Mrs. Sidney Burns to the effect that you forced your way into her apartment in Washington Heights last night. What are you, a one-man crime wave or something? I did not break into her apartment. She happens to be married to a waiter named Sidney Burlitz. Now, Sidney happened to get shot yesterday morning in the uh, penthouse suite of Don Colley, and they took him off someplace to have the wound treated, and everyone says it didn't happen. But you were sure that it did happen. Well, uh, would you be getting all those phone calls if it wasn't true, huh? I don't know. It might be because of the fact that you suddenly developed a pair of lead feet or a private eye complex. Mark, a man was shot. All right, Nick, a man was shot. Now, where is he? I don't know. I checked all the regular hospitals, but uh, none of the gunshot cases match up. Uh, Renzo, this is Granger. Come on out here. Renzo? Mark, this is not a nightclub opening. I don't need any help from our so-called entertainment editor. Oh, believe me, kiddo, I don't consider Mr. Renzo much of a bargain myself, but he knows every rat hole in show business. Polly, wait a minute. What do you think about Don Conn? Personally, I don't think about him at all. As the singers, I like Sinatra. When it comes to dancing, I like Gene Kelly. Uh, yeah, but Polly, uh, Don Kelly's more than just a, a singer or a, or a dancer or even an actor. Yeah, I know. The world's greatest entertainer. Well, when it comes to that, I vote for Danny Kaye. Want me, Chief? Don't call me Chief. Nick, here. Call Lieutenant Berger out at the Washington Heights Station House. Explain to him what you were doing in Mrs. Berlitz's apartment last night. I tried to assure him that you're not a mugger nor Jack the Ripper, but he wants to talk to you. Jack the Ripper? Cops? You boys on city side do get around. Well, we try, Renzo, we try. Alexander is investigating a tip that somebody got shot in Don Colley's penthouse suite in the Hotel Hammond yesterday. A waiter named Sidney Berlitz. Well, Colley's a wild man. I believe he'd do a thing like that. Probably an accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where would they take friend Burlitz to get his gunshot wound treated? I don't know. Man like Collie. He's got sneaky little places stashed away all over. I'm sure he's had occasion to find a nice, amenable doctor with a private hospital. Emphasis on the word private. Mm -hmm. I'll ask a few questions. Uh, discreetly. Doll. Oh, what else? <laughs> That's right. The weather. <laughs> Fantastic. 1937. Best factor of the year, Spencer Tracy. Picture. The Academy Award picture was The Life of Emil Zola, produced by Warner Brothers, starring Paul Muni. Of course. That was the year he won the Academy Award for Best Actor. 